This, this is the wife of the man who was convicted of the murder of Martin Luther King Jr., James Earl Ray. This is Anna Ray. She, you should know, is divorcing James Earl Ray. She has said, among other things, that she had unauthorized sex with her husband many times. She felt uh, uh, during visits. In, uh, I assume, conjugal uh, meetings are disallowed in Tennessee? They're uh, disallowed, but they do go on. They go on. Uh, you felt this was a degrading uh, experience because uh, you had to, you know, you could be caught to do this on the, huh? Yes, uh, I could have been, but uh, James also, I think, the arranged his guards who, who cared about him and who would just about do anything Look for him. Look the other way while as you... As long as they didn't get caught. Uh, and uh, they, they let us know when they were coming to open the door, but at the same time when I had my arm broken by an inmate, uh, the guards did not show up at that time for quite some time. You had an arm time. broken during a visitation? Yes, I did. An inmate roughed you, rough you up? No, he came in and hit me with a, a stand-up uh, ashtray, one of the field-based things. Yeah, why did he do that? Yeah. Um, he wanted to get transferred to another unit, and I believe, I, I don't know for sure, but but he had to have had help getting out of two steel doors that were supposed to be kept locked from the shower. He came right. in in his underwear. Uh-huh. Uh, you also claim to have had sex with James Earl Ray during his hospitalization following a stabbing by another inmate. Yes. You should also, uh, this audience should know that your husband denies that he had unauthorized yes. sex with you. Yes. He accuses you of trying to get publicity uh, because you want to be in a woman's magazine. Or you. He also uh, believes that you're trying to get a piece of the book that he has written, yes. uh, which I assume as his legal wife, you would claim a certain uh, legal entitlement, would you not? Know? Yes, he's written some very nice things about me in the book, and he tells the truth that I have suffered a great deal because of my marriage to him, and that I did contribute greatly to the marriage. I collected evidence or information and constantly tried to prove his innocence. You um, met him in 1977. You were a court... Uh, Courtroom artist. An artist for a Knoxville television station. So you were drawing him in a, probably in a, some kind of appeal process? Yes. Uh -huh. And you met him, and you fell in love, and you married him in prison. Yes, I do. And, uh, and the sex that you've had with James Earl Ray has been in private uh, and has, you claim, been possible because guards who were pals with uh, this inmate turned their backs and gave you the privacy that uh, entitled you for, for this intimate expression. Huh? Not, not all guards were his friends, but the ones who were were in that unit. And it was in the death row unit because it was considered the maximum security part of the maximum security prison. You are uh, divorcing him, however. Yes, I am. Because? Because I realized he didn't love me. He might never have loved me. He used me. And then when he had a book written, he decided that uh, he was no longer interested. And besides, I have a cousin who is a congressman, a well-known congressman, a very rich and influential congressman. And when he found out I couldn't get that man to help him get out of prison, that was also not in my favor. Right. He, he accuses you of having a relationship with another man since 1984. Mm -hmm. Is that so, Anna? No, uh, it is not so. I used to have nightmares about, I'm a very uh, loyal person. Um, I I had nightmares about having uh, other boyfriends and I'd wake up crying because I didn't want to do anything that would cause a problem in my marriage. Yeah. Um, is the caller there? Yes. Uh, are you yes? Are you James Earl Ray? Yeah, you know, I just like to say this, and I'll I'll be done with it. Now, in, in reference to this business about jailhouse sex between Anna and I that she's been promoting, there was none. Her, her interviews relating to the subject intended to lead to a story by her about the subject in a, in a women's magazine. So it was a financial move on her part. Actually, she, she has been living with the dude since at least yeah. 1984, so she doesn't need jailhouse sex. Uh, well, James, it, let me, let me just. Uh... James, please let me make this point. If you married this woman in 1977, as you did, you are oh, certainly a long-term inmate. It is, it, is, it is not hard to believe that you might have been able to establish a relationship with certain guards that would have allowed you to have this opportunity. Here's my point. If you married her in 1977, you know, I, for one, cannot be shocked that you might have had sex with your wife 
under certain clandestine and private and dignified circumstances within the penal system of the state of Tennessee. Why would it be so necessary for you to deny this? Well, well, well there's nothing to this. She's, uh, she's selling the package. What she does, she, 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 she uh, brings up the uh, unauthorized sex, and she goes from there to a, that I'm responsible for the Martin Luther King murder. That's the story she's promoting. And she has a Hollywood divorce lawyer named Mar Marvin Mixon helping her in this project. And in turn, he has a, a, a New York publisher named Cy Preston, and he, he, uh, you know, he more or less handles her and tells you what to say on the right, so, talk so shows. I get it. So he's suggesting that this is a big marketing ploy. Anna, what would you say to, to James' uh, point? I think James has proven himself time and time again to me and to others that he is a, a, a liar. He's a professional liar. That's all he's ever been. He's said I was a lifetime of crime. I felt sorry for him. I it took me a long time to realize what what was happening to me, and uh, he uh, he tries to divert the attention to something else when when uh, I hit the nail on the head. Let, let me just say this, and uh, I'll end it. Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of high targets involved in this, and, and uh, I'm sure attorney he's he, trying to promote this story now that she's some type of disciple of Martin Luther King this matter. But I'd just like to briefly read one paragraph of letters she wrote to me in April 19, 1990. Quote, I heard last night that Ralph Abernathy was murdered as I knew he would be after that book that dared to tell the truth about King and his brutal treatment of women both emotionally and physically. The Kings and Lowry probably are celebrating their victory with their district Soviet intelligence spy and playing their next move. Unquote. Now, Peralta over here, he's been promoting this story too. He claims he's defending the poor and the black and women and all that, so uh, well, there's really enough high pockets. Well, this is who. who. Who made that charge, James? Made what charge? The one you just read. In what book was that? A Anna wrote me a letter. Oh, it's a April, letter. April you don't believe. You, don't, about King, huh? you believe Ralph Abernathy was murdered? That Ralph was Abernathy was a very sick man. In the final months of his life, I happen to know he was on our program. This is a long reach, James. Well, that, that's what she said. That's what he claims you said. That's well, what she said. All right, he, Anna. He, had kept, he kept talking about the FBI killing Martin Luther King. Mark uh, Lane would tell me, be sure you say Dad the Hoover had Mark, uh, Martin Luther King murdered. Every time I did an interview, I told James to quit talking about the FBI because it just wasn't true. And I did not want James to think that I'd no longer believe that he was innocent. So... I just uh, made up something that I thought he might swallow and, and send him a letter so that I wouldn't have any trouble with so him. So you're accusing Mark Lane of making you the point person because for a media blitz suggesting that the killing of King yeah. was inspired by J. Edgar Hoover, yeah. who had already put a tape recorder under Martin's bed in order to catch him in extramarital affairs and therefore wanted to knock him off. Therefore, we free James Earl Ray of his responsibility, and he gets out of jail. And you did this. No, I didn't do it. I said there is a chance uh, that I, I mentioned once in an interview that, that Hoover did hate King. And at that time, I had uh, 26 flat tires in two weeks from my neighbor, who was an ex-detective, who said that James Hoover was right. the greatest man in the Well, i got I got to get out of here, uh, James. Um, you know, can't, are, are you contesting the divorce, James? No, we're probably counter, counter suits, uh, contending that there was uh, adultery involved and uh, other things of that nature. And uh, but she, she excuse me of all sorts of things, having uh, sex right. relations with uh, female reporters and female guards. But all this is just in the, in the artist's imagination. Right. All right. Well, I I I have time only to thank you, uh, James, for uh, being on the phone with us here from uh, your prison uh, location in Tennessee. And we'll watch with interest as this and uh, the more important political issues surrounding your case make their way. Oh, okay, thank you. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to promote a double package here. One is on the sex door where they can sell, and then they bring in the King case, which uh, helps the Justice Department. So, okay, thank you. I do thank you. Okay. And we'll be back in just a minute.